Hello and good morning, Chula Vista. Welcome back to our innovation live event for today. My name is Mrs. Hughes and I'm with the Energy Station. The Energy Station is one of a family of career themed maker spaces in our Chula Vista Elementary School District, located at the South Branch Library. Our focus is to teach about potential careers in the clean energy industry and educate our students about the value of renewable energy sources. I'd like to take a moment to thank our station partners, the Chula Vista Elementary School District, the Chula Vista Public Libraries, our City of Chula Vista, SDG&E, NECA, and IBW, who keep our program going all year long. Well, Thanksgiving is right around the corner, woohoo! And I have a feeling many of us are gonna be doing a lot of cooking soon. And of course there's football, so you might be cooking outside. Well, today our show is called Green Grilling, DIY Solar Cooker. Now, this build is actually revisiting a project we did as one of our very first innovation live events way back in 2020 which was actually making a solar oven to heat s'mores. So I hope you'll enjoy this version as well. Behind the scenes, I have Mr. Bruder, Ms. Feistrek, and Coach Ramirez, who are all with me to moderate the chat and take your questions. And at the end, of course, we're gonna have a Kahoot game. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, there we go. Well, I love to cook and bake, and I'm always trying to find new recipes and looking for ways to make a meal that doesn't involve just eating out or getting fast food. Now, technically, the definition of cooking means you combine foods with heat to make something new. Now, did you know there are all kinds of ways to cook your food? Think of the appliances in your kitchen. For example, you probably have a stove that uses flames to fry an egg. Raise your hand if you had an egg this morning. Or maybe you use a pot of boiling water to make spaghetti. And then of course your oven uses something called convection heat, which is not flames at all. Um, it's actually heat that we surrounds the food that you can maybe bake cookies or roast a turkey. And then of course we know microwaves use electricity. Now, unfortunately, all these great appliances we're talking about, they have something in common and they all use fossil fuels. Well, what's a fossil fuel? A fossil fuel is a fuel that's collected from our earth in the form of coal, petroleum oil, or something called natural gas. Now, if your stove uses flames like the ones you see here, then it's using natural gas. Now, the problem is if we use so much fossil fuels all the time, then over time, a lot of experts agree that we're gonna damage our planet. So the great thing about our solar cooker today is that it doesn't use any fossil fuels. It only uses the sun to heat our food, and we call that solar power. Now the word solar means sun, and our sun is going to be key to making our solar cooker work, of course, but I'd like you to think of other benefits or ways the sun is important to us. So here's my first question to everyone, and it might sound a bit simple but it's still really important. What are some ways the sun is helpful? Again, think of the question, what are some ways the sun can be helpful to us? So type your thoughts in the chat, our moderators will post that question, and we're gonna come back and share out some of your answers. Now, have you ever wondered what exactly is the sun? Well, I have a great explanation courtesy of our friends at Crash Course Kids, who are gonna tell us more about it. So let's watch this video. Mm -hmm. 
Mrs. Hughes, we're not hearing the audio on your video. Okay, of course. We'll go ahead and we'll see if we can get the audio going. I apologize. All right, let's go ahead and check that. I'm going to go ahead and stop this for a moment, Mr. Ruder, and see if I can get the sound to work. Okay, so we can revisit that. Pop quiz. What's the closest star to Earth? It's called Sol. Never heard of it, you say? Sure you have. Sol is the sun. Ancient Romans, who once worshipped the sun, called it Sol, and it's become the kind of official scientific name for the sun. It's where the term solar system comes from. Sol, or the sun, is the star at the center of our eight-planet solar system that provides us with energy. Without the sun, Earth would be a dark, frozen world with no life. But how does the sun's energy get to us? Well, first, let's talk about what the sun is. It's a five billion year old big ball of super hot gas. The hottest part of the sun is its core or center, which is about 15 million degrees Celsius. Whoa. Its surface is not quite as hot, but it's still almost 5,600 degrees Celsius, which is pretty toasty if you ask me. And as for its size, the sun is so huge, you can line up over a hundred Earths along the face of it, and more than a million Earths could fit inside it. But the sun's size isn't what makes it seem so big and bright to us on Earth. It's because it's so close to us that it seems way, 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 way bigger and brighter than other stars. So you know that the sun is hot and bright and that heat and light are both kinds of energy that we get from the sun. Let's take a look at a model to see how the sun's energy gets from good old Sol to our planet. Hmm. Here's the sun. Energy is created in its super hot 15 million degree core. That energy then travels outward from the core to the surface of the sun. But this journey from the center of the sun to its surface can take over 100,000 years to complete. But once the energy deep inside the sun finally gets to the surface, it travels as light and heat all the way to Earth. In fact, it only takes about eight minutes for light to travel approximately 150 million kilometers through space to Earth over here. That's not such a long time. So to sum up, energy is created in the sun's core. It travels very slowly to the sun's surface before it takes a super speedy trip to Earth in the form of light and heat. And you and I can see and feel that energy as sunlight. Without the heat and light we get from the sun, Earth would be just a frozen ball floating around in space, which would be a total bummer. So thanks, Sol. You're a real star. Okay. So you heard from that video that the sun gives off energy through light and heat, which is pretty important for us to survive here on Earth. And that's how our solar cooker is going to be working today. Now, before we get to our build, I want to check in with our viewers about our first question. What are some ways the sun is helpful? Mr. Bruder, do we have some thoughts from our viewers today? Yes, Mrs. Hughes, we have a whole bunch that they shared. Uh, quite a few of our friends said that it helps keep you warm. Definitely. Definitely important. Uh, we also had uh, some share, uh, Xavier shared that the sun helps plants to grow. Oh, good. Mr. Ruiz's uh, sixth grade class from the Virtual Academy shared how we can get vitamin D. Oh, all right. Thanks, Virtual Academy. That's a good one. I hadn't really thought about that. It's important. Also, how it gives us light, how it gives life. Um, about how Angel also shared how it gives energy to plants. That's great. And I think it sounds like a lot of our viewers are thinking in the terms of our plants. I mean, I really can't think of any other way because I don't know if a, a light bulb exactly is going to keep a plant growing as well as what the sun could do. So because we have that light and heat, 
um, yeah, there's just so many great benefits. And, you know, personally, it's like my favorite season summer. So I love having that light and heat all the time. All right. Well, thank you so much, viewers. Well, as we create our solar cooker today, we're actually going to be taking on the role of a commercial and industrial designer. Now, if you remember a few weeks ago, Mr. Garcia at the Innovation Station introduced us to a graphic designer. That career is a little bit different. Now, a commercial industrial designer, you're still drawing out ideas like a graphic designer, but the ideas that a commercial designer comes up with are actually designs for products, things you're going to buy in a store. So it could be, for example, inventing the next kitchen gadget, like that barbecue you see there. Or it might be an item you're using in your classroom or at school. Or maybe it's the next trending toy. So it's really cool because commercial and industrial designers have a lot of versatility in companies, and they can come up with all sorts of new ways that the consumer might buy something for their home. Now, all this talk about solar makes me wonder, what do you like to cook? So here's our second question. Um, go for it. Tell us in the chat, what kind of food do you like to cook? You or your family like to cook? Again, what food do you or your family like to cook? So um, could it be something from your culture? Do you like to cook something specifically for the holidays? Or do you have like weekend traditions you do when you're cooking? Okay, so think about what do you or your family like to cook? Please tell us in the chat and I promise our moderators are not gonna get hungry. All right, while you're doing that, we're gonna go ahead and dive into our engineering design process for this build. Okay, so you know we're familiar with these, you know our steps. The first step is we need to define our problem. And today our problem is, can we design a way to cook without fossil fuels? So that's a problem, we want to avoid fossil fuels, what can we do? Our solution, that's the challenge we're faced with is, can we create a cooker using solar energy instead? So again, we're going to define our problem and our challenge for this morning. The first step of five steps is we're going to ask ourselves some questions. So I know that the sun is obviously using light and heat, and if I might be asking myself, well, what's the best time of day I can use a solar cooker? Um, or I could be asking myself, well, just how hot does it actually get? So those are some things to consider since I'm not going to be using fossil fuels. Is it going to get as hot as what I would maybe use um, as an oven or a stove? What are some other questions you can think of too? And then our second step is going to be the imagine stage. And this is the cool part because we can really brainstorm ideas. It's like, okay, what can I do that's going to be different than what I've already seen before? Um, think of all the ways we describe how we cook. Is there something you've seen? Is there a design or a shape that you've actually seen before that maybe we could copy and just change a little bit? Okay, so you see some examples there in the slide. Um, could we be inspired by something else that you've seen before that we know use we use for cooking? Okay, so imagine some ideas, get really creative. This is the part where you can just go crazy and think of something really different and unique that maybe hasn't been done before. And then after you plan, or excuse me, after you um, imagine what you want to do, you want to plan out the materials you're going to need. So today for my solar cooker build, um, these are some of the things we're going to be using today. Now, I would encourage you, if you are doing this in the classroom, hopefully maybe you're with a, a small group or with pairs. Um, I know it might be difficult to get all these materials, so it's kind of nice to do this in a small group and you can kind of see as a group how you're designing this. Um, but here are some of the must-haves that we're going to need for this morning. So first off, we are going to need an empty potato chip can. Okay, empty potato chip can with the plastic lid. Um, you see in that picture, I prefer to be the paper one, not naming names or brands, but um, you know the one, the can that's like a stiff cardboard, not the plastic ones, because plastic, while you could probably still make one, it's gonna be very difficult to cut. Okay, so I would encourage you to use um, the paper brand. 
Um, and it doesn't matter what length. I know there might be some students out there who are using smaller ones, and that's totally okay, um, as long as it's something that you and your, your team can cut. You're also gonna need one wooden skewer. So little, you know, barbecue sticks that we, we use. Um, one per project is fine. You're gonna need a little bit of plastic wrap or cling wrap. Um, I would suggest just kind of use it as you go. So teachers, I mean, we know that stuff is sticky, so maybe just tear off a piece as you need it. It's only gonna be about the size of maybe an index card, maybe a little bit bigger, depending on how, how large you make your, um, your solar cooker. We'll need a little bit of tape. That's just kind of, again, as a precaution in case things don't stick so well. Um, same thing, tear off a small piece. You can always cut into smaller pieces as, as you need it. Scissors, of course. Now the scissors I'll be using, I'll show you here in a moment, are adult scissors. Again, the cardboard can is gonna be pretty stiff. So if you're doing this with maybe an older buddy, Okay, those who are maybe partnering up like kinders and sixth graders, um, maybe have the older student do that first because it might be a little tough with the little tinier scissors. And of course, we need to cook something. So um, today is kind of a not so sunny day, but if you guys want to try it out, if you have marshmallows around, it'd be kind of fun to see how this goes later in the afternoon. Um, I have a marshmallow with me today. So that's certainly an optional item. Um, and then of course, you can think of when you take this at home, what are some things you could play around with and try cooking um, at home as well, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my doc cam if you guys wanna gather your materials. All right, Mr. Brewer, they can see that okay there? We sure can. All right, move that little dot out of the way. Okay, so here are my materials. Um, Again, this is actually a finished product I have here, and I'll show you my empty can. So this is what it's gonna look like, boys and girls. Um, you can see it's my potato chip can with my skewer and my marshmallow in there. I don't have the wrap on here, but I'll show you when we build how that's gonna look. So this is what your finished project could look like, okay? I'll put this off to the side. And here's my empty can that I'm gonna be using today. Okay, now you notice on my pile, I also have um, a marker. You could use a pencil. I'm just gonna use this so you can see when I um, cut where I'm cutting, but you don't have to have a permanent marker or any sort of marker. A pencil is fine, so you guys kind of know where you're gonna be cutting, okay? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move some of this off to the side. Here's my marshmallow, I'll take out my can. Okay, so first things first. This is actually a really simple build. It's only literally gonna be like three steps. So take your time. Again, be patient. Um, the cutting is probably the hardest part, so you can work together and maybe um, take turns if you need to cut this out. Okay, I'm gonna take off my lid. Leave that to the side. Okay, first thing I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna mark off where I wanna have a window. Think of this like the, um, the opening of a, a normal oven. Um, I'm gonna make a door to my oven. So I'm gonna draw just freehand a long rectangle. So maybe start here and go across. Okay, you can make it as small or as large as you want. I would maybe recommend, I've made a couple of these already, but I would maybe recommend start off small. If it doesn't look big enough, you can always cut more. It's much more difficult to cut a whole bunch than put it back together, right? So it's probably better just to start off small than cut. All right, so that's gonna be my spot I'm gonna cut. All right, next step is I'm gonna use my scissors. Now, this is the part again where an adult or an older buddy can maybe um, help out the younger ones because I actually need to puncture a hole in here to start cutting. And the cardboard is pretty stiff, okay? It's, we call it, um, I think we call it paperboard. It would be like the correct word. So I'm gonna take my scissors and kind of just dig carefully to make, to poke a hole to get me started. So I'm poking, 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 and get that in there. There we go, punctured. All right, so that's my starting point. And I'm gonna start cutting out towards the edge, maybe a diagonal. That's pretty stiff, there we go. 
And if I go over the my marker, I think that's OK, because again, we're just kind of eyeballing this. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, you guys see how that that's bending now? Okay, I'm going to bend this a little bit. Line, turn it around. Gonna get that scissor blade in there. All right. Now, what I'm gonna do here, you can you have some options. Again, there's no right or wrong to this as long as we're making a window. Um, I just cut it along this part, the long one long way, one length, and then one side or one width. How many of you guys are doing perimeter right now? Area and perimeter. Okay, I'm going to bend this back a bit and then I'm going to try to cut in here. This was a tricky part. I have to cut a little bit more. There we go. All right, and it's not perfect, but I got it going. Now, here's your here's here's some options you you have. I went and cut three sides. Right, the fourth side I haven't cut yet. Watch what I can do. Say you want to make it like an, a regular oven door. Maybe you don't cut this part off. I'm going to bend this back a bit. Kind of bend it on the line. So now it's kind of like a nice little door. All right, keeping that on there. Again, it's not, not the prettiest thing, but it's a door, which is nice because I can do two things with this. I see my potato chip crumbs. It's kind of acts as like a little stand so this doesn't roll around. So it's kind of fun. Um, and then when I'm done with it, I can always just close it. Yeah. If I cut this whole window off, just realize you'll have the whole window is exposed. OK, so I kind of like that. My other one I showed you, I actually cut the whole door off. OK, so you can kind of decide what you you or your group want to do. Do you want to keep the door on? Do you want to cut the door off? I think I'm going to leave it on for now. I kind of like it like that. OK, okay. and it's not rolling around. Yay. All right, that's our first step is just cut. Well, actually, two steps. We drew this, drew the rectangle, then we cut. OK, that's pretty much all the cutting. Nope, incorrect. It's not all the cutting. We have one more piece of cutting to do. We need the lid. OK, so the lid itself will go back onto the, the opening, but I'm going to mark off um, a spot to cut in the center. So I'm just going to mark here. And I'm going to just puncture a hole into the center again, have a, maybe an older person adult poke this. Now this is a little trickier than the paper because it is plastic. Um, we didn't put it on the list, but Teachers maybe just having a push pin just to get them started would probably be the simplest thing. We didn't want to all you students out there be holding on to pins all day, but I'm going to go ahead and puncture a hole and this could take a little bit of time. Let's see if I can get that in there. And just puncture the hole. Carefully. Maybe on the back side. Yeah, plastic is definitely hard. Here's a little interesting fun fact you probably didn't realize with plastic. Plastic is actually made from petroleum. So plastic is a fossil fuel. So if you guys are thinking about when we hear on the news and you hear about things and say like, oh, got so much plastic, you know, why do we have that plastic and packaging? All that packaging that boys and girls we use out there, it came from someplace and a lot of it comes from fossil fuels. OK, so that's another reason it doesn't biodegrade easily. So when we use things, it's kind of nice to recycle it, right? Recycle plastic, use it more than once because it's not going to go away anytime soon, right? Paper is a little bit easier. Paper comes from trees. OK, all right, I'm just making these little slits in here. Now, if you really think about it, this kind of looks reminds me of. Um, the lids on a takeout cups. You know how the takeout cups are and you stick the straw in the middle. I mean, that could be kind of an interesting thing to do. Can you make a solar cooker with the restaurant cup? OK, there we go. So the whole reason what I did here is I made a slit like an X to get the hole going. And then I'm going to take my skewer and be able to fit it through here. OK, all right, so I'll kind of 
pause and slow down there if you're cutting. Some of you might be taking longer time, but but yeah, it, it's literally like three steps we're doing today. We cut the container. We cut a small slit to fit our skewer. Make sure it stays in there secure. It's okay, this is wobbly. Okay, but now I'm gonna test it and see how it fits on my solar cooker. And all you're really doing is having space for it to fit in here like that. Perfect. Again, what could you what do you need to do to adjust here? If you're using maybe um, the smaller cans, right? You're probably going to need to trim your stick, right? Okay. And then the real test is, can we fit our food in here? So I got my handy dandy marshmallow. Put that in there. And it fits. All right, looks good. I like it. Okay, so we've done the cutting. We did puncturing some holes for our wooden skewer. Now the last step we have is the saran wrap. Now you're thinking, okay, the sun gives us light and heat. I want you to think about why do you think we even picked this can in the first place and not the plastic one? Do you guys notice something with a can on the inside that might be different than a plastic can? Now if you're saying, hey, it's shiny, right? Yeah, that's the big difference. Besides the paper being easy to cut, this is shiny on the inside. And what do we know? When sun hits shiny things, it reflects. And so a lot of the sun reflects into the can and it stays there. But it's only going to stay there if we kind of trap the heat in. So how are we going to trap the heat so it doesn't come back out of the can? Well, we're going to use our saran wrap. Okay, so I have my saran wrap here and I just cut off this rectangle. So it's a little bit larger than a index card. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fit this over the top. It's gonna get kind of shiny here because of our lights. All right, and saran wrap is again, super sticky. So maybe you don't even need the tape. Maybe you just wanna wrap it around your can and it sticks on tight. Okay, All right. but I do have my tape. It seems a little loose. So I'm gonna grab my tape. I'm gonna just tear off a couple pieces and I'm going to secure it to the door. Okay, think of it like this. Our goal is we want to trap the heat. Trap the heat, okay? Think of um, when you have a hot sunny day. If you leave something in your car with the windows up, what's going to happen when you guys get back from into the car, right? It's going to be really hot because that window, like we have here, let in sunlight, but it didn't have any place to escape. The heat is trapped. And that's essentially what a solar oven does. You're trapping the heat. So you are cooking things. That's why we never, ever, ever want to leave our poor little pets in a car on a hot summer day, right? Or food in the car. You kind of know how that might be if you leave food in the car. Ooh, stinky. Okay. All right, I think we're good. I'm going to make this a little tighter here. And actually, I'm going to take the lid off and then wrap this around so I can pop my lid on and off. Okay. All right. Hope there's not too much clear. That's it. That's our solar cooker. Pretty quick, right? Just a few simple steps. And all you need to do now is get a hot summer day or maybe a hot fall day like it is right now or soon um, and test this out, right? And that's our solar cooker. Cool? All right, let's go on back and we are going to continue with our presentation. All righty, so if you built this just now, or even as you, as you were building, you probably were thinking about, what if I try this? Or what if I do that? And that's great because that's our other step that you know you've seen with us 
seen us do before is called the improved stage. And so even as you were building, you might have been asking yourself, what are some ways I can improve this design? Um, if you had more time, hey, we've got next week, right? You could play around with this next week. Um, different materials, what would you do? Um, in my mind, I'm thinking, OK, I know about sunlight and that dark colors absorb heat, right? Think if you were like a dark T-shirt, how it feels different if you're wearing like a lighter T-shirt out in the outdoors. So I might add some construction paper to the outside. Um, remember at the beginning, I mentioned how we were revisiting this from last year. Last year, we made a solar oven, but it was at a pizza box. So look at that photo there. That's a pizza box, a little bit different shape. Um, maybe I can kind of combine different ideas from those two, the two things we made, okay? Maybe I want to add some foil. So there's no stopping where you guys can go with this. You just got to think outside the box and think of what do we know about sunlight and heat and what are some things you can maybe do to improve your different containers and different designs, okay? All right, so it's time for our Kahoot already. Now, remember, if you want to play with us, you're going to need to open another window, not a tab. So you can see my questions in one window and your answers on a different one. So you see there's our pin on the screen. Our moderators are going to put them in the chat as well. Um, our game pin 2112507. But as we're waiting for our friends to join us, Mr. Bruder, do we have any interesting comments from our viewers about what they like to cook or possibly some things they might want to improve their solar cooker? We definitely yep. have a lot of things about what they'd like to cook. Uh, I'm pretty sure Mrs. Bystrack, Coach Ramirez, and I are super hungry right about now. <laughs> We have, I'll list off a whole bunch of great things. Uh, eggs, burgers, barbecuing, you know, on the barbecue, pasta, tacos, chilaquiles, one of my favorites. Pasta, baking. We were a lot of, a lot of baking, especially with the, the holiday coming up. So pumpkin pie and things like that. Yep. Uh, sweet treats, pork chops, grilled cheese. That was one of my favorite <laughs> ones to make as a kid. Spaghetti, sushi, sushi, turkey, enchiladas, menudo, oh hot dogs, tamales, rice. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, I'm, we, we might have to stop. Sweet potatoes. <laughs> you know what's funny, Mr. Bruder? That reminds me, okay, this is probably going to date me in my age, but hopefully you kids, okay, if you haven't seen it already, it reminds me of this awesome cartoon back in the day I used to watch around this time was Charlie Brown's Thanksgiving. And I loved it because in the cartoon, if you haven't seen it, the characters have a Thanksgiving party, like a Friendsgiving, and they bring whatever they can. It's not even like turkey. It's like chilaquiles. And, well, they didn't have chilaquiles and, and peanuts, but that'd be kind of fun. Um, but all sorts of crazy foods, and they have like a Friendsgiving. That was like the first Friendsgiving. So that would be kind of fun. Just have a Thanksgiving or have a party where you just bring all sorts of random foods. And it's like a potluck. I think everything on there I, I want to try that you guys just mentioned. Yeah, there, there's some great ones. And actually, I'll share a few more. But while I do that, can you pull up the Kahoot screen just so Absolutely. we can see when we're we ready to get that. started? Yep, we can. We have some more bakers out there. Uh, Victoria mentioned brownies. Uh, Gianna mentioned pancakes. Uh, bacon, potatoes. We're, I, I'm ready to go get breakfast after this, Mrs. Hughes. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm sure recess is happening soon. Hang in there. You probably are all getting hungry. Lunch will be here soon. But yeah, I think I think all this food, we're, we're going to need to like get the game going and then we all need to like eat. <laughs> Got it. All right. You know what? I still see we have a few more coming in, but it looks like it's starting to slow down. I'll just share a couple more that I saw in here. Steak, chicken, hamburgers, <laughs> ham. Uh, Hams, yeah, uh, that's good. And, and you know, boys and girls, I think what the great thing about, we're talking a lot about food, of course, today. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and, and mention as well, too, for me personally, it's like, you know, yeah, it's time to be with your friends and your family and all that. But don't forget here in Chula Vista, we have a lot of other places that would, would definitely benefit from your giving. And so, you know, think about just maybe what could you do to be thankful, 
for what you have and the people who maybe don't have enough this year, you know, maybe you can consider if you're with your families doing something um, to show gratitude or doing something to help someone who maybe can't enjoy all those awesome foods you guys just mentioned. So that's just something I, I think just to put in the back of your heads and remember what our holidays are about. Um, you know, it's giving and being grateful. You know, you can know the origin of the pilgrims and Thanksgiving in the first place, right? So it was about helping each other out. So um, I just love hearing everything you guys have to say because um, it's just so real and so authentic. And um, thank you so much, everyone out there who are contributing to our our presentation here this morning because you guys make this really fun. Um, and I see a lot of us are signing in there. We got like yeah, I, 156. I think I think we're ready to go. Awesome. Okay. All right. So if we're ready, boys and girls, let's go. We are starting our game. Oh, I'm going to put like one more person. Okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. Green grilling, our DIY solar cooker. First question, three, two, one. Oven, ovens, stoves, and grills all cook using what? So think back to the beginning of our presentation. Ovens, stoves, and grills all cook using what? Do they all use the sun? Do they all use fire? Do they all use water? Or do they all use fossil fuels? So again, what do ovens, stoves, and grills all have in common? Do they use the sun, red triangle? Do they use fire, yellow circle? Do they all use water? blue diamond or do they all use fossil fuels green square guys okay, so about 10 more seconds to get those in think of our whole topic today of what we're trying to do as an alternative when we cook and let's see how our answers came in all right excellent good most of us chose fossil fuels all three of those are using fuels from the earth which we know um, we need to reduce our dependency on very good Okay, let's see who's in the lead. Smiling Lemming. Hmm, okay. And an expert gecko right behind. All right, question number two. An example of a fossil fuel is, what is a fossil fuel? Is it gonna be coal, red triangle? Is it gonna be petroleum oil, yellow circle? Is a fossil fuel natural gas, blue diamond? Or is a fossil fuel all of the above? Green square. So de the definition of a fossil fuel, coal, red triangle, petroleum oil, or you could just say oil. It's the same thing. So when you hear them say oil, or that's what we're talking about, is that yellow circle? Is natural gas a fossil fuel, blue diamond, or are all three of them, all of the above? Green square. Okay, get those answers in. You guys have about five more seconds. Looks like almost all of our players have answered just now. And, oh, okay, so there's a split there. You guys were so close. I, I like how a lot of you mentioned natural gas. You're probably looking at the photo and thinking, oh, it's just that one. But remember, all three of them. Think like coal from a barbecue. Um, oil, like we use in our, our cars. Um, so actually all three of those are fossil fuels. Okay, Royal Dog, you got it right. Mystery Steel's right behind, taking the lead there. Okay, number three. This was from the video. Sunlight reaches Earth in, how long does it take to get to us? Does the sunlight reach Earth in two seconds? Red triangle. Does the sunlight reach Earth in five minutes? yellow circle does the sunlight reach us in eight minutes blue diamond or does the sunlight reach earth in an hour one hour green square how long does it take from the sunlight to get from the sun itself all the way to the earth is it two seconds five minutes eight minutes or does it take us an hour and we just had the time change recently 
I don't like it. <laughs> That's just me. So I don't know how many of you guys are like, okay, I'm done with that sun. I love the sun, but I don't like us playing around with time changes. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, very good. Remember, eight minutes. It takes eight minutes for the sunlight to reach us. Very good. All right, let's see who's on the leaderboard. Mystery Seals pop back up there. Good job. Oh, and Mystery Crane up 51 places. All right, fourth question. You guys are doing great. Okay, one of those not questions, which is not true about the sun. Not true. It's the same size as Earth. Red triangle. It's a star. Yellow circle. It gives heat. Blue diamond. It gives light. Green square. So which sentence is not true about the sun. So three out of the four correct. One does not make sense. What does not make sense? It's the same size as Earth. It's a star. It gives heat. It gives light. And I think you could probably through process of elimination take out two because we talked a lot about it this morning. What does not make sense? All right, almost all of our players are answering. Three, two, one. Very good. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely not the same size as Earth. Remember, it's closest, closer to us. That's why it looks big, but we could fit a whole bunch of Earths inside. All right. And, oh, Mystery Seal is still up there. Okay. So we have one more question. This was about our career. The role we took on today was a commercial industrial designer. What does this person do? A commercial designer creates clothes, red triangle. A commercial designer creates home items, yellow circle. A commercial designer creates houses, blue diamond. Or does a commercial designer create food, green square? So what was the role we were acting as today by building our solar cooker? Were we pretending to be um, a commercial designer? Did we make clothes? Did we make a home item? Did we make houses? Or did we make food? Okay, remember lots of versatile things you can do as a commercial designer. So let's see who remembers his career. All right, very good. So a little bit different than a graphic designer. They design things for your house. Excellent job. All right, so here's our moment of truth. Let's find out who is our winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, yellow emu is number three. Focused Impala, sounds like a car. Okay, number two. And on top, Mystery Seal. Hey, Mystery Seal kept the, kept the lead the whole time, runners up. Good job, those two at the bottom. Excellent. You guys were all great with that today, boys and girls. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to wrap things up this morning. If you are interested in more fun engineering activities, please check out our YouTube channel, CVESD Innovation and Instruction. There's our playlist. We are packed with playlists. Um, this morning here. So teachers and families, you can also follow us on social media and see what's new at the energy station. But boys and girls, check out that website. Tons of things you guys can do on the break. Do it with your family. Have fun. Build some, some great things. And our Innovation Live event is going to continue in two weeks with our awesome Hydro Station teacher who is helping me out this morning, Miss Bystrack. She's going to explore more with you about where we get our water. It's going to be called Building a Well. Please join her online Friday, December. Whoa, December, we're already here. Um, Friday, December 3rd at 9 a.m. in Microsoft Teams. We hope to see you then. But thank you for watching, everyone. Um, enjoy your holidays. Stay safe. And we're going to see you next time. Bye.